See this angle that the camera is on? You know what angle I call that? Call it, I don't really need to wear pants angle. <clears throat> okay? Something only very clever that people think of. Okay? Because clever people understand why pants are so much better to not wear. <clears throat> you know why? They had to invent pants. Okay? Everyone was comfortable, and then they're like, ah, oh, I need to go outside. So they invented pants. Pants are not a normal thing. The normal comfortable thing is for no one at all to be wearing pants. It's just a lot less practical when it's cold and people have cellulite. So, stretch marks and hair and shit. <clears throat> Anyways, you're weird for fucking wearing pants when you're inside your house. Like, that should be national policy. If I became the fucking president of the world, I'd be like, alright, it's national, international law, universal law. You get to your place of rest, take off your pants. In fact, you're not allowed to sit down or lay down anywhere in this existence unless you have pants off. Because it makes, not having pants on makes every sitting or laying down experience more enjoyable unless it's something cold and ceramic you're sitting on. Then you want pants. Um, so yeah, I will start telling some of my jokes now. Uh, I love Twitter. Haha, -ha, isn't that funny? No, but I, I do love Twitter. And um, I tweet, and I actually tweeted today, uh, 3.50, I remember my tweet, 3.53 p.m. Uh, just roll the fat joint in the wind. Put it behind my ear like a feather in my cap. And then at 4.17 p.m. Just lost a fat joint in the wind. Have no idea where it went. Spent 15 minutes searching. The ear is not a good place to keep things. And then at 4:21 p.m., I just found chapstick and a cigarette. Okay. So all I can imagine is everyone else out there in the world who's putting something behind their ear for a second, thinking this is a good idea. They're walking over something. It's dropping out of the ear, and that explains all the ear-shaped objects we've been finding on the ground. Well, not ear-shaped, just like cylindrical-shaped. I mean, you notice you're walking around, you always see fucking, like, pencils and pens and cigarettes and little chapstick? Like, yeah, people put that shit behind their ear because they had full hands and full pockets for a second. And that's not a good place to put it. My theory is that everyone loses one object they didn't want to lose from the ear before they realize, why the fuck am I putting shit behind my ear? And then they just never do it again. On the other hand, really stupid people who don't remember what they've lost out of their ear and just assume they lost it normally because they're stupid and they just lose normal things all the time, they just keep stuff behind their ear naturally. Because it doesn't fucking matter if it falls out of their ear or their pocket, they're stupid enough to lose shit consistently every every time anyways. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, no, in high school I was a total badass. And the reason I was a total badass is because in grade 8, first day of high school ever, I decided to do the prison yard thing. Yeah, that's right. First day of school, walked in there like a boss, burled up my fist, and just fucking took a big swing at a senior. I was like, BAM! Fucking knocked him on the ground. Started kicking him. Fucking, he lost tons of blood. Uh, lost his continence, which apparently had been a problem for some years already. And, um, and I snapped his cane. And for the rest of my high school experience, no one bothered me. No one even talked to me, actually. You know, it worked really well. Um, so if you're having problems in your social area, whether it's work, school, or whatever, I suggest you just beat up a senior in public. Because people change their opinion really quickly. And uh, you'd be surprised which friends, which people try to make friends with you after that. Because that's even more interesting. But, um... <clears throat> truth is I did actually get in a lot of fights in high school and I'm I'm conflicted how I feel about this because I am a proud Canadian but I feel a little stereotyping like I'm stereotyping myself because three of my seven fights in high school were directly related to poutine and I don't know uh, let's just show of hands here anyone else in the audience can okay, raise your hand if you have ever had gravy in an open wound okay yes okay I knew there'd be some people okay what okay what about maple syrup more? Yes. Okay. I knew some of you had to have been at the Canucks riots. For Christ's sakes. I had two. But I am. I am bad at sex. I'm, uh, I'm like one pump Johnny, but I at least try to triple up, you know? Triple pump Johnny. It sounds more intense, like that movie Triple X. If it was just one X, John, one X, and his name was just X, people might think he wasn't good. 
you know, his mom's like, fuck, I don't like this name. It's a child, I don't like it. I'll sign here, I'm lazy. Right, like, but triple X is like, that's intent. That's like, X, oh, fuck it, oh, I'm angrier. More X's, ah, oh, three X's, that was enough. This is my child. I wonder, is that his birth certificate, eh, in the movie? X, X, X. What do you, what, where did your middle name go from there, hey? What, what if your middle name's like Xavier, okay? And then your initials are literally four X's and your X, your triple X thing gets messed up. Do you think people think you're more potent, less potent, or you just exaggerate the X's? But, um, I am so not good at sex. Uh, and it's, it's actually mostly due to my cardiovascular health. As you can see, I smoke a lot of weed, and I actually have, from birth, chronic debilitating asthma. And it's just, just to do anything is like, ugh, I'm just out of breath, and I just do not have the stamina to perform in bed. And you know, also, uh, Wikipedia's entry on micropenis does not make me feel very good, nor does it help my Craigslist ads. So, I got a small dick, but look what I can do. <laughs> For like eight minutes or so, and then my jaw gets sore. But, you know, that's gonna be a good eight minutes. And then on top of me going at you, pointing at you, right in the lens, me going at you, I wanna be in you, right? That's like an Uncle Uncle Sam. Isn't that the creepiest way, th way to think of Uncle Sam? I wanna be in you, right? Because uncles are fucking creepy. My uncle's awesome though. One, didn't molest me. Two, owned a limousine company. Three, owned a phone sex line. Four, died in Whistler on a huge cocaine overdose. But she said she was terrified of heights. Like, told me she would break down, start crying, trembling, be so paralyzed I would have to carry her away from heights. So I thought, you know what? April 1st, I'm gonna fucking get her with a prank. All right, I love April Fools, and I haven't got anyone with a good April Fools prank in years. Last couple of years, I lived alone, and well, even if you get high, it's not going to be funny when you piss on cellophane in the morning. Okay, so pranking myself hasn't been working for the last fucking year or two. But um, so April first, I said, "Honey, I have a surprise vacation planned for you." Okay, her and I get into the car. Start driving, keep driving. Four hours, six hours, eight hours. I am committed to this, okay? We get to Mount Fairweather. Yeah, 15,000 feet above sea level. That fucking lying bitch loved it. She loved every minute of it. Fucking wasn't scared, wasn't trembling. And I realized, you know, it's just in your head. You don't need to be worried about sea level. You don't need to be worried about the distance between you and the core of the earth. You know, you can alleviate your fear of heights and like everyone else, you guys should all know that. You know, it, it really makes no difference how, uh, how far away you are from the center of the earth. You feel the same no matter how far away you are. Okay? It's all just in your mind. Ugh. I hate when the Beatles are appropriate, all right? Like 300 fucking songs and this one comes on, I've got them all on my iTunes, I hit shuffle, 